Hello, today we're gonna be working on a project. Okay, so the project's actually already done. I am making a goth wedding dress for my friend. Okay, bye baby Matt. About a year ago, my friend came to visit. She lives on the West Coast. So she approached me and she asked if I would make her wedding dress and she said, but it's not like an actual, like normal wedding dress. It's gonna be a goth wedding. So I was like, yes, I will. <laughs> I'm on board for that. I don't wanna make a traditional white wedding dress, but I will totally make your goth princess gown. I had about a week and a half to make the whole thing. So that was a little bit stressful. That plus her wife's jacket. So because they live on the other side of the country, it was a little difficult to get measurements and to do fittings so I decided that I could probably do all of it in the two weeks before their wedding. They <laughs> actually ended up coming a little bit later than I anticipated but I was still able to get everything done and it all looked great. It was kind of an adventure and I just I thought it would be interesting to show you guys the process of fitting somebody who wasn't myself all the way through like actually finishing the garment. Before we get started though, this video is sponsored by Happy and Polly. Uh, Happy and Polly was my first sponsor ever and they're one of my favorites to work with because I love spoiling my cat babies. So more on that will be coming soon. But really quickly, Happy and Polly is a pet supply company and they have literally the cutest cat trees. So if you've seen those like viral cat trees that are like the moon and stars or like different like cutesy themed cat trees, Happy and Polly is the one who makes those. But without further ado, let's get back to the dress. It's been a little bit of time now since I started on this dress so I think the first thing that I filmed was her first fitting so let's go there. This is the sketch we've got two designs one for the ceremony and one for the party it's basically the same design just one has a cape on it and one does not. So this is the bodice and that's what I'm gonna work on patterning first. We've got some fabric for it as well. I don't know how well this is gonna show up because it's black, but it's a floral metallic brocade. So that'll be really pretty. And then we've got some lace detailing stuff. All of this stuff that's up here and like around the waist. I'm not sure how much of it will actually get used, but I wanted to be safe and get some extra, so we'll have plenty to play with. And then I've also got this trim, but the beads are a little bit chunky, so I'm not sure if I'm gonna use this or if I'm gonna try to find something else in my stash that will be a little bit more appropriate or buy something else. This is the skirt fabric. It's like an accordion pleated, just burgundy chiffon, and I'm very happy with how well everything matches. That was really good luck, so that's great. Those are my materials. Right now I'm gonna be patterning this bodice we're making it a corset lace up back so it'll get some boning and I'll put grommets and a modesty panel and it'll lace up in the back. It'll be great. I do have some measurements. I have a like very sparsely filled out measurement sheet. Just had them take them themselves. We're gonna work with this and I think it should be fine. The skirt should be pretty easy. It's mostly just waist measurement and then to the floor. And I like I'm just gonna use the width of the fabric. The bodice, it'll be a little bit more guesswork, hoping that uh, she was able to take her measurements correctly. But we're gonna do a fitting soon, so let's get started. So her center front to waist measurement is listed at 18. I don't think that's right. I think maybe the measurement that I have for this, it just doesn't seem right. So I'm gonna put sub that in for something a little closer to my measurement. Mm, there's gonna be some guesswork. I think I got plenty of the canvas that I'm going to be using for her structure layer that if I really need to recut then I can do that so we're gonna just go with it. And that's about where the bust is and that'll be probably the widest part of this pattern. So if we're doing this on the half then we want that to be 20.5. I think for the back, I'm just going to use the back pieces that came in the Dolores pattern because they're pretty straight up and down. So that's about what I want. Look at the waist really quick. That one's two inches. With the modesty panel, we want a two inch gap at the back. So I need to check the waist measurement to make sure that it will fit her like that. I think this is going to be a little bit small for her. So I'm going to add a little bit back into the waist here. I'm 
need a quick pattern for the skirt. This is gonna be for the underskirt. I didn't wanna make a full circle skirt because I think that'll just not look right for what I want. I took her waist measurement, divided it by six, then her low hip measurement divided by six, and I made sure that it would fit her waist. And then where the low hip will hit, I wanted to make sure that I had plenty of space around the low hip so it wasn't tight or binding or anything. So I added an extra two inches times six, that'll be an extra 12 inches of movement around the hip. For the skirt under layer, I have a shantung. I think it's just a poly shantung. I'm gonna use the shiny side for the outside so the outer layer will like slip across it rather than like getting kind of stuck on this more matte layer. If this was like really, really shiny, then I would not use this for the outside because I don't want too much shine coming through, but because it's a pretty matte satin, I am fine with that. I haven't decided if I'm just gonna serge these seams or if I'm gonna do flat filled seams. It will just kind of depend on how straight those kinds of seams make this stick out uh, because I do want it to be a little bit soft and doing flat filled seams on everything will make everything like very stiff along that seam. If I just do a serge seam, it'll still be like finished, but it won't make it any stiffer than just the raw edge of the fabric. <laughs> This is my friend Adina. She's getting married. I'm making the dress. We're doing a fitting now. This is the first fitting. Um, I got the dress mostly, like the skirt mostly together. I still have to make the cape. And we are working with the bodice understructure right now. And I'm gonna add like the outer fabric and everything, but we wanna make sure that this all fits really well. I'm just gonna pop the stitches on the like top hem so that I can lift all of this up. So I'm taking in the top bust right here because like you're filling out the bottom a lot, but there's not as much volume at the very top. So that's just how boobs tend to be. Yeah. Yeah, and that'll help lift everything too when it's actually being supported from the bottom or the top. I liked it before where it was. That was about there. Is that too low or is that? Let's see in the mirror. Yeah. I might lower this a little bit so it's a little longer. I do like the, uh, the aesthetic of a long, long You like dip. the Okay. Like the, the, the V. Because I, I left two inches of seam allowance so that we could play around with it. Do you want it pointier? Yeah, I like the, what yeah. do you think? Yeah, I like the, okay. the pointy look. Great. I love it. it! I left a two inch hem on this, but depending, uh, oh, put your shoes on. Oh, yes. yes. When you actually get dressed, shoes go first. <laughs> yes. Okay. If you walk forward, is that gonna be in your way? A little bit, maybe. Maybe not. Okay. Well, that's yeah. pretty much, that's it for your fitting for now. Yeah.
ta-da, it's not done yet. Right now, I'm going to check the hem on this really quick. Turn this piece. Need more safety pins. Baby pins. I think that's the hem. Yay. Is this a good height for it? Do you want it lower? Well, it would either be there or here, right? Maybe. Okay. Which so which one, higher or lower? Wow. Hold on. Oh, what's wrong? You let go of that side and go the other one. Lower. Yeah, I think lower. You're gonna look at. Oh right. wow! Does that look like an okay placement? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's what I mean. Covers the top hip of the skirt, or more of is a gentle introduction to the top of the skirt. That is the fitting for this time. We got the lace trim on there and everything fits really well. Yay! We have another thing from Happy and Polly. We're gonna do it. <laughs> Be it! Good girl. So Adina has a three month old infant right off screen over there. Baby Bat and Honey Bee are terrified. So they're a little bit more hesitant to be on screen right now, but that's okay. We've got treats for bribing. I'll just, I'll just leave that there for you. Oh, I like that. <gasps> there she is. This cloud. Here's another one. Is there any instructions? <laughs> Actually, I think there is. I think there is. Yeah, it's right here. Oh, good job. So we've got little brackets. 15, 15, 18. Great. Two bars. I'm ruining your lunch. Her lunch time's in like 10 minutes. Oh, well. <gasps> Are you the best girl? No, this this is curved. Yes. Okay, so you're just gonna sit right out of frame, huh? So the pink one goes on top, the blue one goes on bottom. <laughs> so. Put under there? Oh. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You have to do it in just the right order. I'm gonna wing it. Well, uh, yeah, I see that. <laughs> It'll be fine. Do I have to disassemble that? Here, I think. That looks correct. It's okay, baby bat. I won't let you fall. <gasps> Are you the cutest cat? Honey Bee's been looking rough lately. <laughs> Yeah, just his fur. I think he's getting his winter fur. This I is tried the that. wrong place. Hi. Wait, good girl. This one is definitely less complex than the purple one. Why aren't you going in? Uh, this. <laughs> Yay! Where does that go? I don't know. That has to go on there. And this. Do you like your new tree? This is a good 10 out of 10. Yeah. I think she likes it. <laughs> She's not immediately jumping down. All right, well, Baby Bat approves 10 out of 10. I mean, I feel like she must like it because she's not getting down. Yeah. Thanks, Happy and Polly, for the tree. I think I have 10% off with Min 10. I will put that up on the screen and then I'll also put that in the description. Oh, there she goes. There she goes. <laughs> oh, you are that trying. was beautiful. We've had the cat tree here for like a week now and the cats just love it. They like hang out here all the time. Baby Bat likes hanging out here at night when we're reading before we go to bed. Honey Bee claims it in the morning so they have worked out a schedule that they get to share it. They both really like this little top part. So cute. Okay. Swoosh, swoosh. 
that too much volume. Do you use too much volume? I think it looks great. Haha. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think what I'm gonna do, instead of cutting stuff on the front, I'm gonna put more of the volume into the back so you have more tape in the back. I think I'm gonna push some of the volume on that side to the back. Unless you like how the, that side has more volume over your arm than this side does. That's okay. I mean, both of it, I, we need to see more of my arm. I agree. Right. Do you want this whole thing pushed back a little bit or? N not the, not the color. No, I know. I'm just making sure it's symmetrical. When I'm just focusing on this side. I'm going to okay. make, make this match this side. Mm -hmm. Do you want this lower on your arm? I think maybe a little lower. And then this, I can just cut it so it cuts away yeah. a little bit more. Yeah. I don't want it. I don't want these to get hidden. It's so nice. How's that for how far down it goes? Too far or good? What do you think, Tori? No, that's perfect. Okay. More or less? Or I guess you can't go like yeah, can't more go or the same. That's wonderful. Hold on, where's my loop? Sure. It kind of made its way. Yeah, we might need to like fashion tape it to you a little bit. I'm making detachable sleeves so she can wear them during the party part of the wedding. And I'm just doing that by like gathering some of the leftover hem material onto an elastic armband so that you can just slide them on and off and they will be separate from the dress. I've done a French seam on these already because they're chiffon and right now I'm trying to figure out what shape for the hem that I want. I'm making these really wide because this stuff gathers down a lot more than like normal chiffon does because of these pleats and it'll kind of bring out the pleats a little bit more. I used, I think, six yards in her skirt and that's much more than I would normally need. I wouldn't usually gather down that much fabric, but it's chiffon and it's also like a special kind of chiffon with the pleats. So this does gather down a lot. So right now I'm just kind of trying to decide what hem shape I want because this stuff will get surged off and I don't know. I don't want it to just be one rectangle because then that'll look kind of silly, just a rectangle around her arm. So I think I'm going to make it longer on the outside and then scoop up so it's a little shorter on the inside. So it's just chiffon and it's got a surged narrow rolled hem on there. And then for the top part where it's like around her shoulders, I did just like a bound edge and it's just bound in some bias tape that is the same fabric as the corset. I'm gonna pull these gathering stitches out and then I'm gonna put the collar on.
hope you guys enjoyed seeing the process of fitting somebody else and like making clothing for someone else since on this channel I really just make stuff for myself. The dress got like a really great reception. Everybody at the wedding really loved it and uh, her mom came up to me and was like everyone loves the dress it's so great. I do have some things that I would change if I had had a little bit more time or if I was making it for myself. First, there were a couple of construction things that I would do differently if it was not like for a client, I guess. I did a satin waistband on the skirt because it looks nicer. If it was for myself, I would have just done girl grain ribbons like encasing the raw edge because it is a little bit flatter, I guess. And then also it's just a little bit sturdier, but it's not as pretty. So I guess I could have done the girl grain ribbons and then put the satin over top of it, but I was was running a little bit low on time and I thought the satin looked nicer and it was a wedding dress so I just wanted to make that like more of a pretty detail than a really functional detail. I also didn't put hanging loops and I have talked about this in past videos where I'm like put hanging loops in your clothes. Uh, I didn't and that was my bad. Um, I should have put hanging loops in the skirt it would have made it easier but um, it doesn't wrinkle really so it's not a huge deal. This is like a very easy skirt to just fold up and put in a suitcase which like is what I did with this stuff to bring to the wedding since I was the one who helped her get dressed and everything. I do prefer to put hanging loops and stuff though. <laughs> the other thing that I wanted to do that I didn't end up having time for is I wanted to put hooks and eyes into the bodice and the skirt so that they could hook together and kind of like live together because she was getting laced up I don't know not super tight but she was getting laced up that tension on the waist kept it from shifting around at all so the skirt didn't shift around at all but personally if it was something that I was making for myself and what I wanted to do if I had more time I like putting hooks and eyes into the bodice and the skirt so they can just kind of hook together they can come apart for transportation but as they like live more as a dress on the body um, so to do that you just put the bars into the bodice and then the skirt itself hooks down so that gravity is like pulling down on the hook. I guess if I had had more time, I would have added a little bit more embellishment to the cape, like added some lace applique details as it was. I did not have enough time to do that and I didn't have the applique, so it was fine. The sleeves we made separate. The reason that I left them separate is because if I had attached them to the bodice, she would only be able to lift her arm about this much. Adina is a very uh, rambunctious kind of person. <laughs> she does a lot of arm movement when she talks. She uh, was going to be dancing a lot. This is a Jewish wedding so they have the big dance at the beginning. Uh, she's a very big personality and so I knew that she would want to move her arms a lot so I didn't want to risk her ripping her sleeve off and like damaging the bodice. The lace that I got for the bottom edge of the corset, I think that Joanne's must have changed their supplier because originally we looked at stuff that I had in my stash that I got ages ago and it was really nice and soft and uh, she really liked that lace so I went to Joanne's looked for it I found the same like style of lace but it was slightly different it was a little rougher and stiffer so I wasn't super happy with that I wish that I had just had more of the older stuff in my stash because it was softer it would have laid a little bit nicer because as it was because the lace was so stiff when it kind of cupped around her hips it like wanted to flip up sometimes I think if I had been able to use entirely the softer lace it would have not had to do that. It's Joanne's fault. They changed their supplier, I think, so that's unfortunate. <laughs> oh, uh, something that is like kind of not the best, but it worked out fine. Um, I did not have quite enough of all of the boning that I wanted to use because I uh, have run out of boning tips and I didn't have time to make another order. So I used a lot of the spiral boning that I already had that was pre-cut and pre-tipped and everything from previous projects. Whatever boning channels were left that didn't end up getting spiral boning, I ended up using the synthetic whale bone for because that was the only thing I have that doesn't require bone tips. So it turned out fine, uh, but I would have preferred to be able to use the same type of boning all throughout the corset just because that is what you're supposed to do. I guess aside from like where the lacing channels are, so on either side of the lacing holes, you typically use something that is not spiral steel. Spiral steel will move um, side to side in addition to like front to back. So like all boning will move front to back, but because it's rigid, it won't typically move side to side if it's a flat steel or if it's synthetic whalebone. The spiral steel does move from side to side, like it wiggles a little bit more, which makes it really useful for things like dance bodices where you need to have the boning travel like up and through the like the arm strap, I guess. However, it doesn't make it so good for lacing panels. So I, I just used, um, I think either flat steel or synthetic whalebone for those. But either way, I used a different one for that and you are supposed to use a different one for that. For both the skirt and for the cape, I could have done something a little bit like 
fancier, I guess. However, I chose to do the serge hem for the skirt because she had all those like really nice pleats in it. She picked that fabric specifically. And if I had done a rolled hem on that, it would have made the hem really stiff and wiry rather than staying in that kind of like nice undulating curve, I guess, with the pleats. That was a conscious choice to do that. And I did that on a Zelda costume from a while ago. So I knew that it would work and it would look really good and it, was very unobtrusive looking. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, let me know in the comments. I, I'm really happy with how it turned out and the wedding was really beautiful and it was a lot of fun. And thank you again to Happy and Polly for sponsoring this video. You can get 10% off, I believe, with my discount code, which I will throw up on the screen and also put in the description. So please check them out. They make really cute cat trees. The cat tree that I previously got from them in like June is still holding up great and the cats still love it and they're obsessed with this new one as well so 10 out of 10 recommend. Oh I also I'm really glad that I was able to feature someone who has like a different body type than me on this channel because uh, I do get a lot of requests for more larger body sizes and if I'm making stuff for myself like obviously that doesn't end up happening because uh, I, I only have my own body <laughs> you know, I was glad that I was able to feature somebody who has a different kind of body type than me. And I hope you guys liked that too. I don't know how often it will happen because I don't particularly love doing commissions for other people. Uh, it's a lot more stressful doing work for other people than it is doing it for myself. But um, if it comes up again, then I'll do more. Uh, let me know what you think. And if you want to see more of my projects and more of my cats in the future, then please subscribe to my channel. I would be happy to have you here and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye!